It, it is amazing. And, and I think that there is definitely a movement here in the U.S., I, I suspect abroad, of a broadening of the view of what a pharmacist potentially could be doing. And that, that's one of the things I love about the podcast platform is I get to share people's stories, whether it's their financial journeys and paying off debt or saving for investing for the future or starting a nonprofit, whatever would be their journey and their story. I think those are inspiring, but also sharing many examples of pharmacists that are starting businesses and going into non-traditional, you know, different career paths. And, and I think again, back to my comment a few moments ago about a pharmacist role as an identity, I think so often too early, we get narrowed into a pathway of, you know, I'm going to be a hospital pharmacist or I'm going to be a community pharmacist or because I'm a pharmacist, I could do X, Y, and Z. And, and when I would advise many students from a career standpoint, there was very much this feeling of I'm either going to go do a residency or I'm going to go work in community practice. And when you look at the pie chart of the workforce surveys in the U.S., it definitely is shifting, but still that makes up the majority of the pie, either those that are working in community practice or those that are, you know, working the hospital pathway, which typically requires a residency, you know, here, here in the States. And what most intrigues me is the split of the rest of that pie. And I think what we're seeing is the options are growing and the size of that piece of the pie is growing as well. And I think that's what we need to be thinking about in pharmacy education and reimagining the educational experience and perhaps bringing back things like apprenticeships and exposure and, you know, really having these models where to me, the value of a degree training program is exposure, exposure, exposure. You know, there, there's so few times in your life, you know, when you look at something like a summer internship or a rotation when you can have three months or a month or a season of life where your, your, your primary role and purpose is to really embed yourself in an environment and soak up as much as you can before you go on and do that again somewhere else. What an incredible opportunity. And so I think the more we can define the, the classroom experience and perhaps even maybe less classroom and more experiential, you know, I think the better, but it's an exciting time. I mean, there's a lot of disruption, no, no question that's going on in our profession, but with disruption comes incredible opportunity. And I think we have a generation who is coming out saying, wow, how, how might I use the PharmD in a way that can help solve the many problems in our healthcare systems that mm -hmm. need to be solved, of which a pharmacist is so well positioned to be solved? And how can I overlay some entrepreneurial thinking, whether that's within an organization or whether that's their own business, to really tackle these problems? And that's exciting. Potentially frightening, you know, for some, but I think it's really exciting that, you know, that pathway that you're going to walk into and do the same thing for 40 years, that's not happening. When you look at healthcare and what's happening with disruption and technology, there is no way that someone graduating at 25 or 30 is likely going to be in, in a very similar and stable role for 30 or 40 years. And so that adaptability, you know, is, is, a, is a, such a rich characteristic that I think we're, we're seeing graduates today embrace, which, which is an exciting time. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm with you there. In the UK, actually, um, there's a few universities now. So once you finish your four years of pharmacy here, you do... Uh